Hello and welcome to a rather different episode. So I'm going to be starting to do a series about painting miniatures with oil paints as opposed to the standard like Games Workshop acrylic paints. Um, and after doing lots of research and stuff like that, I discovered there wasn't actually that much online about it. I mean, you've got a couple of people, so uh, Zach Castagoon or however you said his name, does a lot of uh, weathering effects and stuff with oils. Uh, Marco Frisian does some as well. Uh, James Wapple does actually paint uh, models with fully with uh, oil paint, which is kind of where I'm going to go. Uh, but you may be asking, why? Well, it, it's a it's a different medium, and it's a different technique to how you can paint. And you can achieve some very interesting and amazing effects very quickly with oil paints, as opposed to normal acrylic paints. Um, because of their drying time, you have a lot longer to blend and you can get incredibly smooth blends with next to no effort. But today's episode, we're going to go over what you need to get started. So you'll see an array of items in front of you. But the first thing I'm going to talk about is the palette. So this is this is what I use. It's a bit of cardboard with, where is it? bit of prit stick and some baking paper and that's it that's all I need and this is cheap as chips like it's not a fancy wet palette or anything like that you don't want water because oil and water don't mix and yeah you can kind of see this is I thought seeing a project ongoing would do be more benefit than a normal one but yeah that's it that's all you need the parchment basically helps leach some of the linseed oil out of the oils um, which means they'll dry a little bit quicker uh, and that's that's all you need from that so then obviously what you can see in front of me is an array of oil paints so I've got the Windsor and Newton Winton colours which are very good um, they are actual painters oils so like artist oils and they come in a variety of colours uh, you've just got the same, same with acrylics pick what you want uh, but the other one I'd consider is the Avtilung 502s. Now these are oil paints made for miniatures. So they these require a bit more thinning than these. These are out of the tube a lot easier to use and a lot quicker to use than these. And they dry with a matte finish as opposed to a slightly more glossy finish. Um, there's also MIG oil brushes, which I haven't got any of yet. And I do want to try they seem to come out even more liquid than these. Um, but I did try with these. So you see these, I think they call them student colors or something like that, basically the cheapest oil paints going. Now you can pick up, I picked up a set of like this for about four pound. And I tried to pay a model with them and I hated my life and almost didn't come back to oils until I picked up some of these and the difference was amazing so I'd recommend I mean these aren't expensive I think these were like £3.50 a tube and it's about the same for the Abtil Lung they just took a bit longer to get here I could pick these up from a local craft store I mean, in the UK I could pick them up from the range um, yeah so these these are what I'd recommend if you can go for it go for the Abtil Lung if not these can be picked up from any sort of hobby store really you can probably find this brand uh, obviously the next thing is you won't be thinning oils with water that would be very bad so this is where a lot of people get a bit concerned um, and what I have I started years ago with the Sansador by Windsor & Newton I've recently picked up the Artist's White Spirit. Both were dirt cheap. I mean, you can literally put them in a pot and leave them for ages and just keep coming back to that same pot. Um, when I picked up the Abtil Lungs, I also picked up their Matte Effect Thinner. If you want as well, they also do a dry, uh, a fast drying thinner as well. It obviously make the oil paints dry faster. Um, so yeah, your, your thinners. The, there is other brands that people recommend, but I don't see 
I can easily get hold of the Windsor and Newton ones, and I've been ordering up to your lungs stuff, so I may as well pick up the thinners with them. Um, and it all works. Uh, this, I do, do feel, works slightly better than these, but it's a very slight difference. Um, for, and honestly, there's not much difference in the price. So again, obviously water's a lot cheaper, but these aren't. I think this is four pound. So it's not horrifically expensive and it'll last me quite a while already. The next thing, obviously, you've got, you've, you may have your fancy Windsor and Newton brushes. And in all honesty, if you look after it and do it right, you can use it. And then like the next day, use the same brush for acrylics. But you have to know what you're doing and that will take a lot of practice so straight out the bat i'd recommend up getting some separate brushes and keeping them separate to your separate brushes for oils separate brushes for your acrylics now since i was on on that kick i picked up some up to your lungs i picked up some various sizes so you can see i've got a lot of the normal heads and i've also got the the flat head brushes um also known as uh, filbert brushes or filbert or however you say it because uh, the way you blend, which you'll see in later tutorials as we start to, to actually go through the process of painting. I also picked up a bunch of basic craft brushes. I mean, you can pick these up off Wish for free with some shipping. And there is nothing particularly special about them. Just made sure I got some sizes that I liked. So like ranges from 10 zero to 10. So... <laughs> And then I picked up another set that had some different shapes like this, this badger. Um, yeah, and other than that, obviously a mole and a bit of tissue paper. So yeah, this is that's all you need to get started. And I mean, I probably don't really need that many more colors. I probably don't need any more colors really, but I have seen there are some, a brand of fluorescent um, oil paints, which are a bit more pricey, but I kind of want to see what they do. And because I'm addicted to paint and buying paint, I do want some of the other colours of these. I probably won't get any more of these because I don't feel like I need any more. Um, but yeah, so that's it. You want to get some oils, some thinner, some brushes. Don't need to go fancy, go cheap. And uh, your super over-the-top cardboard and parchment paper uh, palette. So yeah, and that's all you need to get going. And hopefully we'll be looking at, in the next video, we'll actually start to paint a model with them. Uh, a quick note, extra on top. This is, I'm, I'm gonna to attempt to actually show painting the entire a model entirely in oils. So a lot of the videos out there um, are about weathering. So it's taking sort of like the burnt umber, thinning it right down and using it as a, a wash or streaks and stuff like that. We're not gonna do that, or we might do, later on showing how to do it but we're going to actually show how to paint a model in these colors um you may or may not know but a lot of bust people who paint busts and stuff like that uh, for flesh tones and things actually use oils on the larger scale models because it's just easier to get a blend and it looks more natural and you can blend more colors in easier uh, and that's what we're all about isn't it is we're all about having to do this the best and easiest way we can to get the best of results and hopefully this series will help you along that route so if you like the idea of this please hit that subscribe button and continue watching the series as we go thanks guys